We are doing um, the Canyon View Mini PD, and this topic is Assess with Canvas. I am Chandra Marks, and I am an elementary ed tech, and this is Julia Cablan, uh -huh. and um, she is going to be at C-Tech and Diamond Ridge, I believe. Yes. So we are going to be the ones that are doing the PD today. Um, if you guys have any questions throughout the PD, if you'll just make sure to put it on the Slack or not the Slack, but the channel over on the right hand side, the little chat there. Um, as we are presenting, make sure that your um, sound is off. But like I said, if you have any questions, go ahead and put it right in that chat and we'll be good to go. Our learning intentions for today are going to be that we are going to talk about um, a variety of assessment types that are within Canvas. Uh, we're going to talk about how we can clearly label those assessments and provide clear directions for them. We're also going to be talking about how to use uh, appropriate rubrics when you are grading and how we can use SpeedGrader to help us grade. Okay, um, while we're looking at that, we're also going to jump onto the iPad and we're going to look to see how um, we can grade very simply using the iPad. So we'll know that we're successful today when you can create those assessments using rubrics and that you can use SpeedGrader to provide that feedback. Remember that when we are doing any sort of um, planning for our classes, we need to think about the instructional priorities. So then when we are looking at assessment, we are looking at um, cognitive rigor. How can we um, encourage our assessments to be um, have that depth of knowledge. Not every um, assessment we do is going to have that first level of depth, and not every assessment we do is going to have um, a DOK of four, but we need to make sure that we find balance in what we're doing so we can um, support our students as well as challenge them. Okay, Julia, you're up. Okay, I'm uh, gonna explain there are uh, the types of assessments that you can do, and then we can we will go over the uh, speed grader and adding rubrics. So there are t uh, so many types of assessments that you can put uh, the assignments, discussions, quizzes, external tools, and not graded assignments. Um, so do you want me to go over each of it, or is there any specific that you wanna do? Um, just go ahead and talk about each of them. Okay. Then, um, okay, so are you going to? I'm gonna um, stop my presenting and I'm gonna let you present. Okay, perfect. And present now, Chrome tab. Okay. Um, can you see right now? My, can you see my screen right now? Yes. Awesome. Okay, everyone can see that, right? Uh, assignments is going to be the first type of assessment that you can put. So how you are gonna add your assignments, uh, just give, um, so you're gonna go to, um, let's go here, sorry. Uh, you can go to the assignments and on right top corner, there's plus assignment sign. You can click on that. It's well, yeah, we can't see your screen. We can okay. only see the assignments that you still Thank have. Yours. Up. So sorry about that. Okay. Now share. Now can you see better there? Because I switched the tab, so that's okay. Can you see right now? Yes. Okay. Now I'm gonna start over. So in order to create an assignment, uh, you are going to come over here, assignments, and then you can uh, click the plus sign on the right top corner. And then you can put the assignment name over here, the directions over here, and then points. If you want, if you can change the uh, points, the grading scale to percentage, completing complete, points, letter grade, GPA, or if you want, you can do not graded. Uh, this is going to be for practices, or if you want to do formative assessments, uh, not graded assignments will work the best. Uh, and then you scroll down and then you are gonna click on save. So um, Chandra will explain that more uh, in, in a minute. I would like to show you another type of assessment as discussions. This is a, um, an assessment type that I would I love. 
So how you're gonna do it? On the left hand side again, discussions and then plus discussion. And then again, name your discussion and then explain your question. And here is the good part. You, if you want, you can post it to all sections or if you want, you can put it a, a, like you can put it as a group and then you can choose your groups. So if you want I, later, I can show you how to uh, set up the groups and then you can save uh, this as, uh, discussion to your groups as well. Another type of assessment is going to be quizzes. Um, okay, uh, quizzes. Just leave. Okay. And then again, you come on the left hand side, there are quizzes, write up, last quiz. And this is going to ask you a classic type of quiz or new quizzes. But I would like to go with the classic type of quizzes here submit so again we can go on to uh, go into details a lot more later but i'm just showing you like how to set it up so again you name your quiz ex uh, explain the directions and then on the questions tab plus new question and then you can write your each question type there are so many different types of assessments over here questions you can make multiple choice true false fill in the blanks we can go into detail with these later but i'm just showing you how to set it up here again you can come to the quiz type you can make it ungraded or you can make it pre uh, practice quiz or you can make it as a survey or a quiz and uh, for some schools you can sync it to um uh, scoured and um, you can change the assignment group you can let the kids to take this quiz many times if you want and um, assign to you can assign to everyone or it's only a certain um, uh, section of your classes and um, i think we went over all types of assessments right um, there's just one more i'm sorry i've totally forgot um, for the assignments this is called LTI, and there's another uh, Kenyan Sioux course for that. And this is really, really helpful, and this is one of my favorites. So when you put your, your assignments, you can come over here for the submission type. You can say external tool, and then you're going to have this window open, and then you can click on find, and you can um, put different um, sections over here. That includes uh, educations or uh, Khan Academy or Nearpod is one, uh, or um, Quizlet or Quizzes. Like you can connect it to, to the uh, other outside resources. And this is going to be the assessment. Now I'm gonna go back to the uh, go back to the presentation. Can you see the presentation now? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So the assignments, um, assignments, discussions, quizzes, external tools, and not graded assignments can be your assessments. And um, uh, Chandra, do you want to go over this? Clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you are creating an assignment, okay, in your um, Oh my gosh, let me get my train of thought. When you're creating an assignment inside of your modules, you want to make sure that it is something labeled that the students are going to be able to see very easily. So when I'm looking at this one over on the left hand side, this is like inside of your modules. So for example, she's doing welcome to 3D art. And notice how it, she has her let's begin. She's got the sketchbook. She has the weekly quiz, the final turn in and starters. So basically every week she has those same concepts that are going from week to week to week. So the students, it's very clear for them to be able to see what they're doing and how they're doing it. The more clear that you can be when you're creating your assignment titles or your module titles, etc., 
the easier it's going to be for your students to see where they need to be. It's going to be easier for the parents and it's going to be easier for you because you're going to be getting a lot less emails back or a lot <laughs> less questions back. So for example, if you notice, one thing that she did very well is she added um, the little graphics, those little images, those little icons, and that is so easy to do. If you are on a Mac, um, I'm gonna take over the screen again, if okay. that's okay. Sure. <clears throat> uh, I'm just gonna pull it up over here. But if you are on a Mac computer, you can just go to the three little dots on the left or the right hand side of your screen. Then you can go and click on your edit. Right here um, in the front is where I want the title to have that little icon or that image. So if I do um, con command control shift, it's going to bring up my set of emojis for me. So command control or not shift command control space bar. And now maybe anytime I have an assignment I want them to do, I can scroll down and find the assignment, like a, a logo that means assignment. So maybe I find like a backpack or maybe I find books or something. And that's going to represent in my class that every time I want them to do an assignment, they're going to pick that topic. So maybe, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick one really quick, but maybe this um, ticket right here means exit ticket. So every time I want an exit ticket, I have that little image there. And then when I update it, notice that ticket is gonna show up right there. So the students are able to see it easily. They know that that's my exit ticket every time they see that image. Okay, another thing that I can do is I can come to my three little dots and maybe I have a lot in my modules, maybe I have a lot like pages and different things like that. But every time I have an assignment, one thing that maybe you're gonna do is increase that indent. So notice I have everything aligned, but the assignment that the students have to turn in has now one indent in that makes it just a little bit easier for those students to see. Okay, um, if you do not have a Mac and you have a PC instead, the way that you find it on a PC, let me find my screen again. On a PC, sorry, it's going to be the Windows button plus a period. So if you have a PC, that's how you're gonna bring up those small little icons to be able to um, add those in as well. So that's just a little bit easier way to do it. But when we are in an actual assignment, okay, templates are already built. So if you're bringing in a template from our Canyons, um, from our Canyons templates that we've already have built the in common in Canyons Commons or not com Canvas Commons, sorry, then they already have things that are built. So when we're looking at our assignment, notice that it's also very clear. They have images that are going to help those students when you're creating. So you have those images there that it's like, here's what your instructions are. So every time they see that backpack, they know that that's gonna be the instructions. Anytime that they see that um, the arrow pointing or whatever, that's gonna be the guidelines. And then, Anytime you have like technical help or support that they need. So maybe they're using Flipgrid and they need to know how to use Flipgrid. Or maybe they're creating a discussion and they need to know how to use that discussion. You can throw those in there. And once you have those, literally you could simply like copy and paste them over from assignment to assignment really. And it would make it really easy for you to not have to redo everything every time but make it very clear and understandable for what your students are trying to look at, see, and do. So that is clearly label assessments. Did we have any questions with that? I don't see any. Okay, Julia, I'm gonna put you back on. Okay.
And um, so we are going to start grading the assignments. Is that okay with you? So um, we created the assignments, and now we're going to use SpeedGrader to grade the assignments. Um, so the um, sorry, I need to, to present, present now. Mm -hmm. I need to present now, and I'm going to start with uh, travel brochure. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to start from the um, uh, doc review, uh, doc view. So let's say this was my assignment, and then I want to use the doc view, or you know what? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so it is. Yeah, sorry. I, let's start over. So we're on the speed grader. This shows how to grade the assignments. So this is an assignment. This is what I put before and then if you can see when you are on the assignment page on the right hand side it says speed grader so when you click on it you will be able to easily uh, grade the assignments there um, the first thing that i would like to show you as you can see on the right top corner it says student four can you see that can you see uh, my screen we can only see um, build a biome review. It's okay. not showing sure as you're editing. Okay. So you will probably need to show, um, present entire screen instead of presenting just okay. just a uh, okay. change. Then I'm gonna um, okay. Give me a second. Stop. I'm gonna stop share and then go back to share. And then I'm going to do the window. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. I would do entire screen if you're able to do entire screen. Because that means that you'll be able to see everything. Okay. So let me do it that way. I am, okay, entire screen, chair. Okay. Now, is it better? So, here is my, go. okay. This, so. I'm on the assignments on the right top corner, it says speed grader. And then I clicked on it and I come to this page. So um, here on the right top corner, I can see the student names, but if you want, you can hide the student names or you can see only students with uh, ungraded assignments. So what do you do? On the uh, left top corner, you see the gear button. When you click on it, it says options and then sort student list according to the day they submitted or student name alphabetically or the submission status. For example, uh, it, it will uh, prioritize the students uh, or assignments needs grading or not submitted, etc. Or on this button here, it says hide student names in the speed grader. If you want, you can hide it or if you want, you can see the student names. Uh, right now, I'm going to hide all the uh, student names here, and then oh, you are going I'm to add on to that. So I really like um, hiding student names. One reason is you know that you don't want to have favorites, but you always have favorites in your class. Hiding those students' names makes it so you're not grading based on who it is, but what their work is. Mm -hmm. And so I really like hiding those student names because it really helps me grade more fairly and more equitably. Exactly. Thank you for pointing that out. So we did the speed grader for an assignment. Right now we're going to do it for the discussion because this is um, different. So in this one, you have the uh, discussion board over here. There is no speed grader on the left corner. It's kind of hidden here. So you're going to click on the three dots and then you will go to speed grader. And now I can see what the student puts here and then I can grade the student's uh, work from here. So this was for discussions and uh, doc view. This is a very helpful tool. Uh, so when you put the assignments, okay, so I'm gonna hide the student name here, options, the student names. So, um, perfect. So um, you can have uh, you can have the doc view if the student uh, 
submitted appropriately. So this talk view is very helpful. What do you do with this? So you can put your comments here. For example, let's say I like the, the student put the um, reasons to visit the, uh, or the stories. So what I do, I just want to put a comment over here. I just say great job here. Okay. Or if you want, I can go ahead and uh, or I can go ahead and then highlight this section, for example. And then I, if I would like, I can put a comment here. Great job or fix this. If I want to delete this comment, I come over here and click on this trash can. I and I and then after that, I can click on it. Uh, delete that one. Um, if you want, you can see this as a whole screen. You can um, make it minimize it. If you want, you can put a comment over here, like a huge comment, if you want to see it. And you can change the color of your uh, fonts or background, or the you can change the size of your comments. Totally up to you. Over here, this is very helpful for giving feedback to the students. If you want, um, so for example, for an art pro art assignment or something else, you can even draw on it. You can change the line, thickness of the line or the color of the line or your shape. If you want to delete it again, you can come over here, click on the trash can and delete it. So this is a great way to give feedback to the students. Or oh, another way in the speed grader to give a feedback to the students in the assignment comments, you can just put your comment to the student and then submit it. Or you can put an attachment uh, showing, um, you know, if a student needs to work on that. Or you can put a video or even you can record your own video and then put it as a comment to the student. So these are the great way to give uh, feedback to the students. Oh, yeah. Can I add on to that? Sure. So one thing I would highly suggest is day one, week one, whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. make sure that when you are doing your assignments, um, you're spending a lot of time providing that feedback. Um, make sure that when you're providing that feedback, it is very clear. So in, she put great job because she was in a hurry. But mm -hmm. when you're doing it, make sure that you're, you're very explicit on your feedback. Great job doing blah, 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 blah. Or please mm -hmm. make sure that and whatever you're you're giving that feedback for, make sure that it relates back to your rubric, because you're grading not necessarily on spelling that day. Maybe you're grading on um, the thought process or the comparing and contrasting. So while it's important that they have great capitalization and spelling, we need to make sure that 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 we are grading on what our rubric is telling us to grade on, and we're providing that feedback based on it. Um, the other thing um, that I was going to mention is that on that week one or, or the day one or week one, please make sure that you teach your students how to go back in to see the feedback. Because you guys are spending a lot of time creating that feedback, but if the students never go back and look at it again, it's not going to do any good. So what you want to teach them to do is you know, they've submitted the assignment. They see that they have a grade for that assignment. Now teach them to go back to the assignment, open it back up. And once they have opened that assignment back up, they will be able to see your drawings on it. They'll be able to see the comments to the side of it. Um, and there may be a little um, feedback button up on the top right. If you've added comments that they click on and their results will show up there of what you want provide feedback for. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you guys all teach, but remember that when you are teaching, um, provide the feedback that is relevant to that grade level. So make sure that you um, are provide, you know, like not providing too much, not providing too mu little, but make sure that it's meeting um, the needs of your class. So, all right. All right. And speed grader, it's a, it's really helpful for a teacher because you are giving like prompt feedback. It is easy to grade it, and once you grade it, the kids can just like get it really fast, 
and then you know it's prompt feedback um it's it's gonna be helpful okay in order to grade it really fast and um specific in order to give specific feedback rubrics uh is rubrics are the amazing tools um so how do you do it again you click on the assignments and then you choose your assignments and then um so once you save it and published you can add rubric uh, so i'm gonna go over here go back to um for example this is my rubric this was an assignment from a student and then i put a rubric here um so let me, if let me go back to the assignments so over here i have my rubric if you want, you can add the rubric, uh, change the name of the rubric, and then change the contents over here. So let me go to another assignments here really fast. And then, um, for example, um, uh, let's go back here. Oh, sorry. Um, so since this assignment, it, it, this course was um, back in time it may not let me to add a rubric and it's not letting me to add a rubric sorry so let's go back to the assignment uh, with a rubric and then we will um, go ahead and then uh, change that rubric okay so this is my assignment and i go to in the speed grader I go to the rubric, and then this is my rubric. And when I am grading, I can just click on this, click on this, and save. And this student will get the grade for that. Like, for example, five plus uh, three, this student will get eight points. So by just clicking on the, um, the, the boxes, you can just grade the student. And that is really specific, because once you give, like, let's say, three points, the student can see what is missing in her, his or her work. And, uh, and like it is uh, helping you to uh, grade it really fast and then give an immediate feedback to the uh, students. And how do you uh, change a, a, a rubric? Uh, you can just uh, edit the rubric really easily. Let me go back to the presentation here. So since it's not letting me to add a rubric or change the rubric right now. So um, what you do, for example, in this assignment, you just um, at the bottom, at the bottom it says plus rubric. And then after that, you can put the title of the rubric. Uh, you can put the description and then add the points by clicking on those pencil icons. And then you can adjust the points and you can add you if you have like a very um take save person and then if you would like to have your outcomes you can add outcomes over here or you can add lots of criteria different criteria over here and there are different choices over here you can just adjust it as you would like once you created your rubric you will go ahead and then update the rubric and you can use the same rubric for other assignments as well. Let's say you have a presentation assignments in different topics. You can use the same rubric for uh, similar assignments. And when you are grading, as I said, like why clicking on the boxes, you just and then save, you just uh, give the grade to the students. And if you want, you can uh, change the rubric, edit the rubric again. So do you have any questions related with that? So the reason why the rubric was not able to um, set up or she wasn't be able to change it or add mm -hmm. it is because you have to add it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So make sure that when you go into add your rubric, you add mm -hmm. it before you add the assignment. Otherwise, it's really tricky and you may have to remake the assignment to add that rubric in. Yeah, and my uh, my uh, this class was my last year's class, and then I had uh, you know those students left, so I was not able to change. It. Okay, and Chandra, if you would like to move on. Yep. So I'm gonna take over um, using my iPad now. Okay, so. There is an app for Skyward that you can use. 
or not for Skyward, for Canvas. And it is this yellow one down here at the bottom where it has 19 messages, okay? And it is called Canvas Teacher. There's one for Canvas student that you probably use all the time. This one is for Canvas Teacher. And this is a way, it will come up in just a second, hopefully. This is a way for you to easily grade. Over on the left, um, under courses, you should be able to see all of the courses that you have. I would build and make everything on your computer. The only thing I would necessarily use my iPad for, or my phone for that matter, would be for grading, because it's pretty easy to grade from your iPad. So instead of even clicking on courses, if you just click here on the to-do, then anything that needs grading will show up in your to-dos. I literally had this cleaned out this morning. It looks like I'm up to 15 of them again. But um, anything that needs grading is right here. Notice it doesn't show the name of who it is, but when you click into it, so for example, this um, digital divide one, it says I have one that needs grading, so I can click into it. And now I'll be able to see the student's assignment. I'll be able to use those tools like she was talking about. The thing I like about it is this is a Google Docs assignment. So on um, Polia, she wasn't able to use the doc view tools, but on the iPad, you are able to use those doc view tools. So then I would be able to like circle things that I need to. I would be able to type in my comments that I need to. And then over on the right hand side over here, I'm actually able to put in my grade. Um, if it is a rubric instead of just my grade of zero to 15, if there's an actual rubric in it, it will show up right where that grade is. And then you can just tap that rubric and it will save for you. Once you've done that, you can go ahead up on the top right hand corner and click done. It's going to disappear off of your to-do list and that to-do list will come right back up. So then you can go ahead and grade the next one. Um, in that assignment, um, so like for example, I have this one right here. If I'm ready, so I've graded this one and I'm ready to move on to the next student, I literally just take my two fingers and slide it to my right, or I mean to my left, so slide over like you're sliding a book page, and that next student will come up with the answer um, that you could go ahead and, and grade that student's work as well. So that's a really easy way to um, use your Canvas teacher app for grading. So that is our session for today. Do you guys have any questions for 